Welcome back to Germany. I have exciting news. Pirelli have come on board as the official tyre partner of Drive the World, which is just fantastic because given the amount of miles, kilometres I'm going to be doing this year, you can imagine I'm going to be burning through quite a lot of rubber. And this 911 Carrera T was actually fitted with P0 tyres from factory and given all of sort of Pirelli's ties with F1, the partnership's going to create some pretty exciting content opportunities later in the year. Right now, I'm headed to the P0 World in Munich, one of just four P0 World centres in the world, uh, the others being in LA, Dubai and Monte Carlo. They're sort of much more than just tyre centres, they're kind of celebrations of every part of the Pirelli company and brand. I'm going there because I'm actually going to be getting a full set of fresh tyres for this car, my 911T. After that, I want to go about trying to film a video that I really should have filmed a couple of weeks ago when I was in Munich, but it didn't quite work out. Anyway, more on that later. Right now, let's go and get some fresh rubber for this car. set of fresh rubber for this car and I have to say we're creeping up on 20,000 kilometers now and the set that just came off were in pretty good condition apart from another nail in one of the rear tires they probably would have lasted for quite a bit further but to celebrate the partnership to announce this partnership uh, Pirelli very kindly offered to put some fresh rubber in this car and I wasn't going to say no. So yeah, it's brilliant. Anyway, now, as I mentioned earlier, I want to try and film a, a video which I should have filmed a few weeks ago because when I passed through Munich originally during Drive the World, a lot of you messaged me saying that I really should have met up with Jer Collector, quite a famous German Instagrammer or car collector. I think Shmi 150's filmed with him a number of times. A lot of people have filmed with him, uh, but I haven't. And so luckily today, he is around, he is available, and before I leave Munich again, I'm gonna go meet up with him. So he's given me a random location. Apparently he's gonna be waiting there with two of his cars, uh, and then we're gonna go and check out his collection. Let's go. Now, I wanted to come here today to film an episode of Driveway Goals. However, you may not know that Jerk Collector doesn't really appear on any of his social media. He prefers to remain hidden, which I think makes filming a Driveway Goals kind of pointless because you kind of want to hear from the owner about the cars in their collection. So I was trying to work out what to do when Jerk Collector said, well, look, I'm going to go get some lunch. Why don't I just leave you to it? So I've got all of this space and all of these cars to myself. What would you do? Out of my way, Miss Moneypenny. Now that I've got that out of my system, let me give you a tour and show you the cars that make up the quite iconic and unmistakable Jer Collector collection. Now, it wouldn't be Drive the World if I didn't try and focus my content around 911. So we are kicking things off with a GT3 RS, the 991.1 previous generation GT3 RS, but still looking mighty fine here with some uh, custom decals, custom racing livery. Right next to it, an incredibly rare car, the Mercedes McLaren SLR Sterling Moss, a car that was celebrating uh, the absolutely iconic and legendary racing driver Sterling Moss. 
Ramos, who won, amongst other things, the Mil Emilia with Mercedes. And this car, effectively a sort of barquetta or, or roofless version of the SLR. Um, obviously another super iconic supercar, or maybe even you could call it a hypercar from back in the day. But anyway, these cars are so rare that at one point someone stole one and they were so difficult to sell because it's so iconic and so rare that they ended up having to burn it down in a field because they just had no other way to get rid of it, which is incredibly sad. But not sure it's supposed to be the sort of most fantastic car to drive, but as a thing to look at and a, and a showpiece, uh, absolutely unbelievable and special. Uh, I've already touched on it, SLR 722 edition, so the sort of uh, more powerful uh, ultra version of the Mercedes McLaren SLR. And this was kind of the, the start of the rebirth of what has now become McLaren Auto. It was a collaboration between McLaren and Mercedes. Uh, and then a few years later, we obviously had the 12C, quite a few years later, but anyway, um, there you go. Now this, how many of you know what this car is? In my sort of new appreciation and love for BMW, uh, this is ticking all of my boxes because this, this harks back to an era, a generation of BMW that I really enjoyed. I actually owned a 330i uh, of this shape right here, but this is the M3 CRT. Now, less than 100 of these cars were made. Effectively, the M3 GTS, the orange car with the wing that I drove back in Singapore, this was the four-door version, um, but it's sort of was never really sort of talked about by BMW and so it's kind of been forgotten but let me just show you you get bucket seats in the back uh, but it's so much more than that uh, it actually shares the same engine there you go there is uh, an m3 gts so it's got the same engine as that car big hunking v8 uh, and then a whole load of other trickery because obviously in this sort of four-door variant uh, it needs to be a clever car and it was quicker around the nurburgring than uh, the coupe gts so super super rare probably around 200 250 000 euros now uh, if you want to get your hands on one of these if you manage to find one because numbers are so low. Uh, right next to it, you've already seen me uh, uh, acting out my sort of James Bond fantasy because we've got a BMW Z8 from the from the Piers Brosnan James Bond era. My younger viewers may not know what I'm talking about, um, but a very iconic Bond car before Aston Martins made their return to the Bond franchise. Uh, another thing which I'm being obsessed with at the moment, little Fiat 500s, original Fiat 500s in a really nice colour here, uh, the convertible version. This one has a really, really quirky horn. Uh, anyone who's watched Shmi's videos will know it's one of those iconic we've got an M3, uh, sorry, M4 GTS here. Uh, M3 GTS already focused quite a lot or featured quite a lot during Drive the World, so I'm not going to bang on about it too much, but very cool to see. Rare car. Uh, 675 LT Coupe. Now, we're going to get onto it in a second towards the end of this video. Uh, why is there a massive Ferrari logo in this sh showroom? I was going to call it showroom, but garage, uh, and then a ton of McLarens. Quite rare on this car comes with a roll cage. I actually drove uh, an LT Coupe in Geneva, which also had a roll cage, but it wasn't an option that was chosen that much. So if you can see just there behind the seats, roll cage, and you get the buckles as well. So yeah, that's definitely going to have a, a premium one day once these cars uh, correct themselves on the used market because they are bargain of the century at the moment. Uh, we then have two Aventador SV Roadsters. This one apparently has one of the wackiest and craziest custom exhausts you could ever imagine. I've been showing a couple of clips of this car on the Autobahn and it I mean, an F1 car is a... It's not an F1 car, it's like a jet fighter in a terrifying way. I think it would make my ears bleed. <laughs> Um, a stunning colour. Lambo aficionados will know the names of these colours. I just don't, I'm afraid. It's red and orange to me, but there's something about Lambos where people go, oh yes, it's Rosso Buowo and Orancio Tukabugu. It's like, I don't know why people get so obsessed by that, the names of Lambo colours, but there you go. Two very nice uh, SV Roadsters, obviously popular for them to have two. Uh, C63 Black Series, uh, one of the final cars, actually, one of the very last C63 Black Series. I love this car. I think it's an absolute hooligan, kind of like the last hurrah from AMG before they became the absolute corporate machine that they have now that they are fully fledged Mercedes company. Um, C43 AMG, that's not a real car, is it? That's not a real AMG. This, a proper AMG, hunking great, naturally aspirated V8. Very cool to see. Then we've got another 675 LT, but this time the Spider. Now, 
Uh, should I, I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to come back to this. Uh, there you go. There's the P1 uh, in its sort of launch spec. Super cool. This is the one final hypercar that I need to, or want to, more likely, uh, drive this year on Drive the World. I've done the 918. I've done the LaFerrari. Lots of you think that I've driven a P1, but I haven't. I've only ever been in the passenger seat. Uh, it was in Geneva during, not Geneva, in Zurich during Vlogari. Uh, unbelievable experience but never been behind the wheel. Unfortunately, not going to happen today, but still very cool to see that car. And then next to it, I would argue a, a good-looking Senna. <laughs> I think you all know. I kind of detest the way the Senna looks. I think it's quite horrific. But the spec on this one just about works. It's subtle enough that, yeah, you kind of hide some of the hideousness of it. But still, I mean, look at these two cars next to each other. And someone tell me that on looks alone, they would pick the Senna over the P1. It's just never going to happen. That is still an almightily good looking car. And this is just... But everyone says it's great to drive. So that's what it is. Uh, and then we have a very cool and a very mean looking Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo. So this is the racing series that Lambo do. Uh, this car now owned privately and used on track days. It's been slightly modified and opened up because to take part in Super Trofeo, the car's kind of uh, has to run to some restrictions. I think all those restrictions have been removed and it's now an absolute beast and I just love these red headlight covers. Uh, I've got to show you this F3 car because this is Jer Collector's uh, original old F3 car in full Ferrari livery. I'm guessing this is from the old, back in the 90s, I suppose, because we've got the Marlboro stuff, the uh, Magneti Morelli, the Fiat badge, Goodyear shell. Um, but I love it. It literally looks like a little baby Ferrari Formula One car, so that's very cool to see. BMW Isetta, the mad car made famous by Top Gear, where the door opens. I can probably show you, actually. Um, I can't believe that literally, oh, yeah, there we go. Door opens like that, and the steering wheel comes towards you, and you jump in and close the door on yourself. I was going to say, I can't believe that they've just left me with all of these cars open and the keys to things. Uh, some old school tractor. We have, now you might look at that and go, oh, it's a G-Wagon sound, but no, this is not any old G-Wagon. It's a G65, the V12 G-Wagon. I think the only other person in the world that owns one of these is Justin Bieber and probably uh, some prince of uh, somewhere in the Middle East. Um, I'm not sure we're ever going to see Mercedes making another V12 G-Wagon. I could be proved wrong, um, but yeah, complete behemoth uh, looking very nice and talking about behemoths right next to it the daily whip an e63s modified or tuned by rentec so this thing is running huge amounts of horsepower and whilst it looks pretty stealthy it's got sort of addition one bits on it that are a little bit shouty um, obviously under the actual hood and cover it's a complete monster uh, and the final things that I have to show you two old school BMW races from the 40s I believe um, this car actually took part in the Nürburgring race in the 40s um, but next to each other looking pretty cool unfortunately I don't know more than that this is a little bit pre my knowledge base not that my knowledge base is that fantastic but uh, yeah I, I'm pre I'm post 60s I would say that's kind of where this is a little bit too far forward. And then bikers, I'm so sorry bikers, I'm not really gonna know what to say here. I'm assuming that's, a, is that Mark Marquez? Uh, and I'm assuming that's one of his race bikes or, or a road going bike that has got his livery. And then we've got the quite famous Ducati uh, 1199 Superleggera. I don't know if it's called a 1199 or an 1199 uh, and then a BMW Superbike and KTM. And there's, there's other little toys knocking around. But here is the elephant in the room, the Ferrari F40, because I mentioned it already, there is a massive Ferrari logo at the end of this garage. There are Ferrari posters and things everywhere. Most of the cars have Ferrari stickers on them, yet the F40 is the one and only Ferrari in the collection. What is going on? This collection is having an identity crisis. Now, if you are going to have just one Ferrari in your collection, this really isn't a bad car to choose. The F40, I think, arguably, mm, I was going to say arguably the greatest Ferrari of the last 30 or 40 years, or, or heralded as the greatest driving Ferrari as an experience. I remember when I met Sebastian Vettel. Oh, did I just drop his name into this video? Yes, I did. Uh, he talked to me about how this was his all-time favourite Ferrari and his favourite car to drive. And I had a very limited experience behind the wheel of one, driving through a little uh, English town at about 40 or 50 miles an hour, but it was still breathtaking to thrash this thing. Must be unbelievable. And you can see it's actually got some protectiveness uh, on the front end there, because obviously I, I assume they drive it and don't want it to get uh, beaten up. But yes, 
I've learned that over the years, this collection uh, has changed, and it was all Ferrari focused and Ferrari based. But uh, as the company changed and evolved, and as lives changed and evolved, uh, the collection just changed with it and they stepped away from Ferrari, sold a lot of the cars uh, and have actually moved, as you've probably noticed, towards McLaren. So McLaren have turned up on the scene and developed these kind of crazy hypercars. Uh, the collector decided to move away from this brand. Now obviously I'm very against that. I think it's a horrific decision um, but each to their own. Everyone's allowed to make their own decisions and I love the fact that Ferrari is still running strong in the blood. I think you never lose that even if you slightly fall out of love with the cars and maybe the direction of the business itself. So not your normal driveway goals video and I'm aware that many of you may have already seen this collection but I am so glad I found the time to come down here and that Jer Collector opened his doors and let me come and check out these cars and, and left me alone to do so because I've never, I've never experienced that before. I mean, God, if this was my collection, I'd just spend hours and hours, if not days in here, just looking at things and tinkering with things and polishing things and truly, truly special. My question to you though, what is he missing? we've got sort of BMWs, we've got Mercedes, we've got Lambos, McLarens, we've got a Porsche, we've got Ferrari. What's not here? What is, what, what would you add? Because I think it's a pretty complete collection ticking most boxes. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you have and make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come.